That's right. It's time for Thursday Thunder, and it is brought to you by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Juju Gotti was in the lab cooking it up for us today. Ah, uh, man, you already know what time it is, man. We are 16-3 and three over the last couple of bets, you feel wow. me? We've been missing Ooh. by one uh, leg the last couple of mm. weeks. So hopefully I'll get to make it up to you right now. First leg, I'm going with the Blue Bloods. Blue Bloods. North Carolina Tar Heels to win the game tonight against Alabama. Woo. You dig me? Also, I'm going to the Celtics, the C's as they call them. My brother Jalen Brown will score over 22.5 points tonight <laughs> Gaming against the Atlanta Hawks, his hometown, by the way. Mm -hmm. And the last leg, I'm going with the eyes. You know, they fear the deer up there in Milwaukee, but I fear the eyes, daddy. Mm -hmm. Bobby Port is over 13.5 points. You got to know he's going to Salute the Thursday Thunder. Salute the SGA. We are in the building, baby. That thunder was excessively loud. That's on me, but sometimes you can't control thunder. Yeah. Guys, let's update March Sadness. It is time for March Sadness. I'm excited because we are finally into the second round of our tournament. And as we know, March Sadness is presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. We are updating the Greg Cody region. I believe Nice Hat is predicted to, be, to make a deep run in this uh -huh. tournament. Mm -hmm. I can tell you. It has made it to the second oh, round. Nice hat asshole. Guard play. Wow. Uh, as a five seed, it has made it's it It's a complete through. team. We're we're gonna get, and we'll get to that one. But we're going to start Inside with the one seed. The one seed, Lovely Cruise. My dad singing Lovely Cruise in Vegas is the one overall That's seed. the one seed? That is the one. It was, it was more of an emotional. Like I go, We go for comedy a lot with this stuff, but that was an emotional moment for the show. So let's play that one, and we will unveil next who it's going up against. But in the second round, Lovely Cruise by Greg Cody. Drink it up This one's for you It's been a lovely cruise Alright, we're not going to play all yeah. of it. So that yeah, was yeah, that was yeah. just a cool moment. The best part of that video for me is Yeti clearly telling my dad when to start singing in that because nice. my dad has no timing. You see Yeti like he, like you would with a kid, like five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> go. But that's a good. I think it's a, a a warranted one seed. It was it was a great moment to be on stage for that. But this is a funny moment, and it, I think the one seed's going down. I think the one seed's going down to the nine seed mm -hmm. in the Greg Cody region, and that is it's Greg, bitch. I'm Greg, bitch. <laughs> Elton John? Make him look like a star. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Greg, bitch. It, it made it through. That 19 has one good player, right? Like, that's the thing about yeah. this 19. It's, it's the boo-boo. It's the Northwestern of, hey, we've got one really good guard. If we can make this happen, we can make a Steph run. Steph Curry at Davidson. But, you I'm know. Greg, bitch. I mean, oh, so great good. jumper. That's Tracy McGrady on the bad Orlando Magic of that. Right. Anyways, all right, moving on. Two seed in the Greg Cody region is Greg making a revelation about a Magnum condom. What do I got here? I got a Magnum condom. <laughs> um, we won't get that out. That's shocking. Um, <laughs> Here's a picture of Christopher when he was like three years old. Right next to the condom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a subtle reminder. Yeah. Forever, forever, forever. Never forget yeah. him. It, it, the way he says, here's a picture of, of Christopher, and Dan says right next to the condom, it sounds like there's a picture of Chris as a three year old with condoms next to him. <laughs> That was an odd, like, I'm not, I'm a, a little peek behind the curtain. I fed my dad that line about the condom. No, it, don't. Oh, God. Why would don't you tell give people it away, that? man? I mean, I think the, people know. No, that. You don't have Dan's going to be so want, mad. I want to believe that your dad, A, has a hog, and B, is still, still potent. Sometimes I'll feed him a joke, and I'm like, that was uncomfortable to feed him. You like, why am I t feeding my dad condom jokes? Yeah, Greg, oh. Greg comes in one day and says, Christopher, you're going to have another brother. So that two seed is going up against my dad during our Miami Dolphins brought, uh, live stream watch along that we I think we ruined the Dolphins season with this watch along. But
But uh, it was my dad getting annoyed when we kept going to him in his press box. Wake him up. Uh-oh. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to be bothered anymore. Now it's getting tense yeah, because he didn't need that as focus. a result. He needs something that happens. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can says, see him mother says, effing no, on says, Can we bother, uh, yes. Are we bothering you right now? Turn on your microphone, Greg. My microphone's on. Okay. <laughs> when my microphone is on, you oh, guys have to come to me. I mean, don't tell me to turn my... Right, you, you told me to leave my microphone on. I did. So don't tell me turn your microphone on when it's on. Paint the scene. The paint the scene is I got to go to work. Good night. <laughs> He's going to be pissed. He's going to drive home pissed. He's going to be mad at us. For he does years. seem like he's actually working right now. No, he, of course he's working. And he's rapidly angry at us. <laughs> Who do you guys like there? Magnum Condom or Irritated Greg Cody? Irritated Greg is great. Yeah. I, Hearing I him just go, the story is I'm working. It's great. I don't know. The gold, I think the gold standard is still number two. Uh, the, the, the quick hitters. Is, the gold is standard is still the gold wrapper. Exactly right. All right, moving on. Three seed here. Don't miss my wife. This is just an epic rant in Vegas from my dad. Topless Are there any son. good Greg it's Cody stories not told by Greg Cody about Greg Cody <laughs> yeah. before we get him out of here? I oh, have okay. a couple, but I'm not telling them. <laughs> Baby! That's yeah, my that guy. kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't. No, I'm quite. You know what? I hadn't left. The hotel until last night. I'm a very quiet man. I'm yes. A, you know, I'm a married man. I don't cheat on my wife, despite that <laughs> gratuitous line in back in that my you day wrote. that I wrote. <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, I wish you were here, my wife. I really miss her. <laughs> no, I don't. That's the thing about my, being married. You know, you're not allowed to say, I don't miss my wife. I've been gone two days. I haven't been gone long enough to miss my wife. I'm sorry. I call her. You I'm on the phone with her for 30 her. seconds. You know, that what am I? Hello. Hello. All right. All right. We'll see you. All right. And then, you know, I'm going to see that's her. Just, that is just, that's a that's a great one. You missed the best part. How's Jumping Charlie? Good. How's Jumping Charlie? Good. <laughs> it is just, and that is just my dad because he's so right about that. Sorry, I had phlegm in my throat. That is going up against a six seed, and that is Paranoid Greg refusing to do it back in my day. Dude. Oh, are we, are we doing this now? No, I'll get cut off at this point. It's too late. It's too late in the segment. No, no, no. I'm not going there. We make concessions for the clock. No, you're going to cut me off. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I am yeah, not. I'm not doing it right I now. don't do the cutting off. <laughs> I'm going to. You realize in a minute and 20 seconds, I will be like halfway through it. You'll cut me off. No, I won't. And everybody will laugh, and I will be genuinely pissed. Oh, Greg, we can move the clocks around so that we can finish this yeah, up, and then we'll what, go a shorter segment on the next now, one. You bull. That's what you say now, and I don't believe you. I don't believe you. When have I ever lied to you? Uh, many times when it comes to a, a cheap laugh on this show. No, I'm not going to have... Fair I'm criticism. Gonna, I'm not going to have back of my day interrupted twice. I'm just not going to do it. Mm. That kind of thing. And you know it. Not going to do it. And you know it. We're just going to skip past. What? <laughs> I, uh, that is weird, wild stuff. I did not know that. But damn, Eisner. So classic, yeah, Greg yeah, Cody. It's, there. It's, uh, I yeah. like how it devol- it goes from like you're not gonna catch me, and then he just kind of disintegrates away into random Greg sounds. That's a six seed. Good Lord. All right. And so our final matchup here in the Greg Cody second round matchups, it's the nice hat full time, but we're not, we're going to see what that's playing against the four seed. This is a tough matchup right here. This might be the toughest matchup of all of these, mm-hmm. the birth of, and you know it. Uh, not close to that. Had Tua stayed healthy, that prediction would have come true. <laughs> okay. And you know it. And you know it. I don't know it. <laughs> and I don't know why you and think. you know it. And you know it. <laughs> and you know it. Get that shirt on the Greg Cody yeah, Show. Right. Com or that kind of thing. And you know it. Mm-hmm. What? There's no comeback. Uh, yeah. And you know it. You're at a loss for words, yeah, Dan. Have to. And you know it. And you know it. <laughs> and you do. You know it. Who so God knows it. And you know it. And you know it. A healthy tour, and the Dolphins are having a parade down Biscayne Boulevard. Pants next. I mean, I think I got. I, I know t- Tony loves nice hat. Ass. We're gonna play it right here. Yep. Let's go. Let's just play it. The five seed nice hat. Ass. Can't trade Marino. 
<laughs> nice hat. Ago, nice hat, Zazzle. It's what he's most known for. It's like I'm holding on to it. Do you remember what Scott Mitchell looked like in that next game after Marino they got were hurt? Nine and two. They were 9-2. Oh, and two. Amazing. And then they lost their last five and missed the playoffs. <laughs> nice they hat. They were 9-2. and two. But it's, it's Marino. Nice and then hat. the next time we saw Marino, after Greg yeah, Cody traded him, he threw for five touchdowns. Nice and he was Dan the Man on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You can't trade Marino. Nice hat. It's just the tenor, the tenor yeah. of the nice hat <laughs> elevates as also Zaslow is elevating his. So, so right. Greg's like, no, nice hat. Nice it's, hat. It's almost like he's like trying to find the window. Like, nice, nice hat. hat. Oh, nice hat. He says nice hat Zaslow the first time. And then I think that gave him the idea that Zaslow sounds a lot like ass. There's a uh, there's a little part of me that feels like it's like when a cat is watching a bird on a TV and it's chasing after yeah. it, thinking it's real. Like there's a moment in Greg Cody's mind where he thinks that Zaslow can actually hear him, yeah. right? Because if you don't, well, you don't realize there is my dad is watching He's just that. Just watching yes. a clip. The, like my dad's not audience. in that room. The audio audience, the Zaslow and Izzy were on one day. Greg's in there the next day. We're replaying for him what they said. And he's talking to Zazzle as if he might be able to hear him. Yes. It was ridiculous. Man, Through and you know and it space. versus nice hat ass. That's a tough one. Uh, uh, can Are we allowed to give our picks, or is that going to taint the— No, you can, no, no. Who, you can say who you'd vote okay, for. Okay, so I'd vote for Greg Bitch over Lovely Cruz. Yeah. I'd vote for Magnum Condoms mm -hmm. over Greg being annoyed during the watch-along. Paranoid back in my day over Don't Miss My Wife. Strong. Ooh, I go Don't Miss My Wife there. No, I go uh, Paranoid. Paranoid back paranoid in my is day. good. Because then it just devolves into Greg noises. But then this last one, this 4-5, or five, Dude, man. I think I'm going and you know it if I had to vote. I, I like the participation from everybody. How everyone starts saying it and Dan says, I don't know it. <laughs> I think that's the way to go. Yeah. yeah. This is – well, go check out our socials on Instagram and vote for these because – it's getting intense. Second this is round the match best region we have, right? Yeah. Or the sound. And remember, March Sadness is brought to you by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at getyourguide.com. So our very own Lucy went to Iowa's first two rounds of basketball. She's at, she's at the Sweet 16 right now. That's why she's not with us today. Uh, but last weekend, she went to the first two rounds of Iowa basketball, and she shot content, guys. How about that? Let's see what she did. She worked. Wait, one more time. One more time. It's me, Lucy, and I'm here in Iowa City, Iowa, for the second round of the NCAA tournament, Iowa, West Virginia. I heard you hated my last video. That was pretty rude. I didn't appreciate that. I worked very hard and did a very good job. But as they say, if you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. I believe that's how that goes. So I'm trying again. I'm back. I'm talking to the people. I'm working very hard and not satirically this time. So, please be nice to me. Do you guys have a favorite Caitlin Clark moment? You said these were going to be easy questions. <laughs> you can say all of them. Oh, when she drilled the three-pointer to break the NCAA record. Indiana game last year. Whenever she's in the State Farm commercial, I go crazy. I'm like, hey, I know her. When she set the record beater, if she was uh, surprised, what did she think when it was going up in the air? And she said, I knew it was money. Um, yeah! When she said she's going to the pros. That was your favorite moment when she was leaving? Yeah, the prices go back to where they were before. <laughs> All right, are you afraid of South Carolina? No. Scared? No. no. Wrong answer. No. No. Um... No. I'd be lying if I said no. I respect them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the right answer. Yeah, yeah. People keep saying no, and I'm like, stop saying that. What would you guys be willing to give up to see Iowa win the national championship? Oh, my son. He would, he'd would he probably say, good call. Exactly. That was worth he would. He would. <laughs> Actually, if he's watching, he'll say, yeah, yeah. good job, Dad. He'll say, Dad, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I would break up with my boyfriend for Shut them to win. Goodness. I'm showing him this. <laughs> All the Hawkeye girls. <laughs> but not her man. Oh, my, <laughs> my wife's right there. We can't. You can't set me up like that. I'm not saying give up your wife. Well, I'm saying, I mean, like, you're asking. I don't know. But his first thought was, I'd give up my wife. I just don't want to say it. Would you give him up to a CIO win the national championship? 
I would go homeless. No, I'm serious. I would give up my husband's car, and he loves it more, almost more than he loves me. That sounds, we would give it up. That sounds like him giving up something and you yeah, getting the next. That's how I rolled. Speaking of LSU, did you guys happen to watch Kim Mulkey's presser where she talked about the Washington Post? How did you feel about that? It's a little suspicious, but... It's very suspicious. Yeah, I don't know no, she's full of controversy. Sounds like she's being, you know, a little bit too much right now. She yeah. did whatever they say she did. I, I agree. <laughs> but unless I watch it first, it's fine with me. These Iowans, they're too nice. I just want them to come out and talk <laughs> about Kim Mulkey. I think she's a waste of time. I don't really like her that much. So. Took the words right out of my mouth. You get me. They should give me one of those. I'm not going to give you any money, Iowa. Stop asking. I'm not doing the dance, bro. We play a game called Who That Is, and I'm going to show you a picture of someone, and he's in the sports world, and you have to guess who it is, okay? It's a, it's a man. I know. I know. Wow. Okay, so he's maybe he's not a good person. of an NBA team. Okay. Is he an Iowan person? Um, not necessarily, but maybe one day. He's cute. <laughs> Okay, I, I almost got to say that I know it's not your dad. Not my dad. <laughs> well, it looks like my friend Randy Krejci, who's in charge of all the referees in the high school athletic program, but I know it isn't because he's my age, and that guy isn't. He looks like a sports better. No, I, it's he's someone that I definitely don't care about. He's I probably don't even care to know him. I don't pay that much attention to the man. I, I assume... Me neither. I assume he's not an ESPN guy. Not anymore. Uh, not any man. Well, that, that, that's true of all of them. I'm going to say it's uh, your, your producer. It's my boss, Dan Levitar. Yeah. What do I win? Yes. We have no prize for you. Uh. This has not been enjoyable. I like what I will win for a thousand. Uh, Dan, Stu's not there this week. Actually, I don't even think Dan's going to be there when this video runs. I mean, that wasn't enjoyable for me. Maybe a little bit at the end. Brother, I've run out of things to say because that was just... <laughs> Sucked the life out of me. And I know you're thinking, God, you look like because it sucked the life out of you. It's actually the lighting here. It's terrible. It's been bad since I was a student five years ago. Uh. This was brought to you by Game Time. <laughs> Download the Game Time app. Use code Lucy. Get $20 off your first order. Terms apply. I don't know if we're going to Albany or not. Me and Rose. I know Iowa for sure is going. Ooh. I asked the fans, I was like, you scared of South Carolina? I should have asked, are you scared of West Virginia? Jeez. It's like left a taste in my mouth, you know? Like, yeah. I guess, I guess winning was cool. That was, that was cool. That's all I have to say. Uh. How about that? You know, and the funny thing is Lucy said that yesterday. I said, well, don't you like close games where your team wins? She says, no, she wants all blowouts. And so that's the, the real-life reaction. She looked terrified during the game. She looked like she was crying at the end. Is she crying? This is some Steph Curry I mean, stuff. probably. She always cries at the end, right? Does she? Yeah, good or bad. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she likes sports. Is that enough to cry? Yeah. I've yeah. famously only cried one time for a sporting event. So, like, I, I, the idea, like, a win would drive you to tears. I don't think so. I've ever cried for a sporting event. Yeah, it's not fun. Not fun. Was it happy or sad tears? No, it was sad tears. This was when Brazil lost in the World Cup. Seven nothing. Seven, you know, yeah, seven one, I think. Oh, seven one. Okay. But whatever. It was I'm trying to think. Like, I'm trying to think what has been the most heartbreaking thing is in my fandom, like, like maybe like Le like the Heat losing the first year, the Big Three. Really, that was that heartbreaking. Was tough. Yeah, that was tough. I'm just trying to think back at like <laughs> I was more heartbroken in a moment when LeBron left. Left, yeah. I was than I was like, through that be... series because oh, none of those well. games were like buzzer beating losses well, the, the worst buzzer beating loss i could think of ended okay because it was game six when Derek white had to put back dunk last year but then they ended up winning in seven yeah. so it all ended up okay he literally left on my birthday 
<laughs> oh my Dude, god. Dude, Pat Riley in the plane and all that stuff. That was mm-hmm. tough. Yeah. That was tough. There was Through a magazine that, article. There was something about the 2011 season though where everybody was against Miami. Yeah. Cuz people that didn't give a shit about Dallas yeah. were such Dallas fans and I was like please dude you, you just, don't even yeah, right? you just got here like you, dude, please you wanted just to tell them all to shut the hell up exactly right? like, it you was wanted, Miami against the world you wanted that moment of the heat would win and like yeah what's up now you wanted to do that but exactly. you know ironically I think them losing paved the way for the world to embrace the Miami heat because if they had won from the beginning people would have hated them even more man it would have been like even doubling down. But them losing made them vulnerable, made them human. And so it made the next two wins like, oh, it's kind of fun to hear a cool team. You say that. When we were fans. It didn't feel that way. It felt no. like everybody was still really no. rooting against Miami. Dude, Not I, quite the same as that first year when, you know, especially like the first LeBron game back in Cleveland. But when you were watching that team, like – People were still talking like, no, this is all going to be a failure. You guys suck. It's all flash and circumstance. And then they won the first one. So the second championship, maybe, because it was so fun. And then there was a 27-game win streak, and the dominance was fun for everybody to watch. But that second year, people were still rooting against them. Maybe maybe I'm mixing up 12 and 13. Uh, but, But like I said, I think the failure is what allowed that if they if they had just won one, if they won one, the first one, everyone would have hated them hated forever, more. They would have and would probably more. still hate the franchise. Yep. Well, People hate the whole Heat culture thing, yeah. but they would still hate the franchise the way that like the Yankees are hated. I will tell you what I hate. I hate not getting credit. I hate not getting credit. Every day I see my fingerprints all over the sports media landscape. Oh man! <laughs> Every day I see it, different ways. Is it Nick Wright stealing my idea for the for the MVP club? Right, the MVP conversation bar. Is it is it uh, someone else stealing an idea about like doing a movie podcast for bad movies? I, I see it every day. And the latest, the latest. So everyone knows about what happened with me in the jump shot. If you guys want to run the video, you can run the video of me shooting. It's not that's not how I shoot, but that's how I shot in that moment. And so I can't run from it. It's there. I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. That's not how I shoot. It, but it happened, and it went viral, right? And then I did the, the the commercial, and everyone loved that, and that went viral too, right? But you know that what? That was hilarious, by you, the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. But you know what's happened since this? All of a sudden, we got a rash. We got a rash across the sports media landscape. Of Sounds people, itchy. People running to document themselves shooting. We start with Skip Bayless. This video came out. He looks like he's 100 years old. Anytime Skip Bayless has I mean, to he move, is. anytime he has to move, that's when I realize how old he is. Look at this. And it's like, oh, look, I shoot. He's shooting. That was it, the first take, probably. It, lo- it looks like he's at Hoosiers. He only took three shots. He's three for three. That's also, crazy. Also, whenever he shoots, he runs towards the basket. Like, yeah, that's get his own part. rebound. Yeah. That's the best part. The momentum. It's falling it's the shot. But I say all this to say Skip Bayless was never shooting in no gym. Until he saw me go viral. Now all of a sudden he wants to show everybody. Oh, you guys think I talk about sports, but I don't do, I don't do it. Uh, look, here's my jump shot. Unless you believe this is just a mean picking on the easy villain. I'm going to pick on a friend. Mark Jones. Mark Jones is a very dear friend of mine. South Florida guy? South Florida yep. guy. Local guy. W- one good. of the best play-by-play men in all sports who can do different sports. Mark Jones was at, calling a Sixer game last week. Drew Hanlon, the, the trainer. Recorded this video of Mark Jones taking this jump shot. We have a guy in front This of him. does look more like a one and done. Like they just passed him the ball. He shot it. Like that doesn't look like Skip Bayless did, like cut his so yes. he had all makes. Mark Jones just got a pass. Like I'm that's kind of nice. I'm just saying, Jonesy, been, it's 70 games into the season. The man has called about 94 of them for ESPN and for the Sacramento Kings. Now all of a sudden, we got cameras when you're shooting. In Philadelphia. Is there right audio now. to this video? I'm asking our video the, team because they're. I almost feel like they're talking about yeah, you. He's, he's, no, he, this. he doesn't. He just says, first time, I really do this. What did you first think? shot. You think I just talk about what this? What do you say, bro? You think I just talk about this? Jonesy, I know what you're doing there. You're my friend. You are a, a trusted confidant for me in this business. But don't think you safe. From being called out. You know what he is? He was influenced. But, gentlemen, I'm not an influencer. I am the influence. Don't ever get it twisted. I set the tone for what this media thing is about. You know, it usually goes, 
that black people all look alike, right? Yeah. We're, Roy, we're usually the victims of, you know. Yeah, we're definitely the victims of things. Of, of yeah. the people mistaking black people for other black people. Like, for instance, when Samuel L. Jackson was mistaken for Morgan Freeman, was it? Or what was it? it was that, that, how Lawrence could you, Fishburne? La- Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. How? how, how? I, look, I don't know how. I just know that it's hilarious. But in a little segment we like to call America Just Switch Sides, <laughs> shout out to White Man's Burden, Sage Steele, who I did not even know she had a show, did this with Dana White. Running. What's Joe Rogan's dream? What's Joe Rogan's dream? Joe Rogan, Dana White. <laughs> What's Dana White's dream? Did you just... Think I, totally I was Joe did. Rogan? I totally did. She just called me fucking Joe Rogan. You thought I was fucking Joe Rogan? Yeah, I thought you were Joe Rogan. I was Rogan. bald no. before Joe was ever I know, bald. Okay. I know. Hey, listen to me. Joe- <sighs> <laughs> Couldn't happen to a you better gotta, person. Like, she's got to roll Amen. with that better. Like, she just was like, oh, this is awkward. Like, she could have played it off. If she, she did. She tried. She no, tried. she could have just gone, well, you guys are close. And really made it a question about Joe Rogan, and then gone so from just there. Flipped it there. Just yeah. flipped it. Just well, flipped he never it. You have t- to. He never told you his dream. <laughs> that's a good impression. I, I think. I think that's first of all, it's a great limited fix, H. Steel. Oh, thank you. Second of all, I think the breathiness of the delivery is what makes it worse. If she had just said, "What's Joe Rogan's dream?" and like, "I'm not Joe Rogan. I'm Stan. I mean, I know you're Dana White. My fault. What's Dana White's dream?" If she, she went, but it's like, I'm going to hit an emotional note here. What's Joe Rogan's dream? And why are they not wearing shoes? That's an excellent question. Can we watch that again? Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. What's Joe Rogan's dream? What's Joe Rogan's dream? Joe Rogan, Dana White. <laughs> What's Dana White's dream? The double did pat on the knee. I think I was Joe Rogan? I totally did. She just called me fucking Joe Rogan. You thought I was fucking Joe Rogan? Yeah, I thought you were Joe Rogan. I was Rogan. bald no. before Joe was ever I know, bald. Okay. I know. Hey, listen to me. I think she's going for casual. Hey, hey, on my podcast, you're you're at my house. Take off your shoes. Yeah. By the way, I found the clip of an anchor mistaking Samuel L. Jackson for Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, can we play Working that? for Marvel, the Super Bowl commercial. Did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? Oh. You know what? I've been my mistake. I, you know see, what? What? see, you're you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We oh. don't all look alike. Fuck. Oh. You're we exactly may be right. all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. Don't look I am. I. I am guilty. Um, I am next busted. question. I am guilty. He thought guilty. you were Bob Dylan. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're the entertainment reporter. I know. I'm you're done the mind. entertainment reporter right. for this station. Vlog. And you don't know the difference between I know. me and Lawrence Fishburne. My, my mistake, uh, my mistake. I apologize. Yeah, this is just like Stugatz and Jonathan Coachman. Uh, we don't all look alike. <laughs> no, this would more be like John, Stugatz and Tony Collins. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony Collins and uh, yeah. Cassidy Herbert. Yeah. W- w- which is funny because Cassidy and Tony are not the same ethnicity. So no, absolutely not. All women look alike. Oh, oh, all women look alike. All women look alike. There you go. No, I, I, going back to Sage Steele, the, the, the funniest thing to me is even if she had said, What's Dana White's dream? That's a terrible question. That's a terrible question. Like, who cares? Right. That does, that gets over. <laughs> that's a good point. Of what a terrible question that was. If she said it correctly. What's Dana White's dream? She's trying to be like that dude from inside the actor studio with that question, right? Oh, James what's, Lipton. What's yes, Dana yeah. White's dream? <laughs> that's a funny character of her playing like a limited fake James Lipton. <laughs> Sage Beach <laughs> Sessions. <laughs> oh. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. We don't all look alike. So, while we're here with awkward things said on camera, Julie Delpy, this is hilarious. I've, I don't know if you guys have watched. Who wants to set this this up? What is happening here in this panel? That's so, the funniest part about this is I don't think we all, we don't really know the content. That's the best part of this. So, this this clip went viral yesterday on Twitter and every other social media. Um, and it's clearly a bunch of really well-respected actors speaking on a panel. Um, Kieran Culkin is there. Danny DeVito is there. And Julie Delpy is there. And I don't know, I still to this moment, don't know what the question was that set this up. Uh, there apparently was a couple of minutes of pre-ramble and some some speaking after this. But this is the audio and video that goes along with what Julie Delpy said. 
I, I sometimes wish I was African American, you know. Oh, we just got oh, we the, cut we that really, 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 that really cut it, yeah. We cut that short because that's yeah, not the context. most important part. It's, the most it's, important part is, is the, the reactions. reactions. So we got pictures of the reactions, though. Well, like, we have like, pictures. Hulkin is like head ha- so, ha- so, hands. We know, we got, so, so here's Danny DeVito. That's the. <laughs> that's it. Pardon me. Like that's the. Excuse what, me. What? Yeah, that's the. I know. The, yeah. See, Hulkin heard it and is. He is, knows this is going to go viral. Oh my so god! I am co- I'm getting myself out but, of this. But going back to Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is. I've I've discussed this before on the show when. You're not really paying attention. You're in a, like in your own world, and then you hear something that's like r- rapidly pulls you back into real life. Like, I'm sorry, what? What she just say? Because I heard like Dana White being called Joe Rogan. There you go. Like Thomas trying to describe a troll doll. Okay, so the deep cut. We have it's it's not that deep of a cut because it's from the Tony Show, and the Tony Show is awesome, and it's a gift that keeps on giving. And we've got we don't have the video. But we've got the images of the reaction when Thomas said the word colored. Thomas is a producer here at Metal Arc. He's a great guy. He said what now? We're talking about trolls. We're talking about trolls. We're we're playing taboo. Yes. Let's start in the beginning. We're playing taboo, and he's got troll dolls on his card. Uh So he's trying to describe a troll doll, and then he's talking about their hair and how they're different colors. So he starts rambling a couple words. There's words he can't say if you know how to play taboo. There's words that are taboo. So... He says colored, meaning the hair. And then me, Amin, Lewis, yeah, so, so <laughs> Mike Fuentes, and Taylor all react like. Oh, right, here we go. We, we got to, so this is Tony's reaction. Tony's. I'm Whoa. like, this, is, this got my name on it, so I, I'm really worried about what's happening this next. Is, this is what I like to call Tony getting his resume ready. <laughs> the Tony show gets canceled on after episode one. All right. Next up is me, I believe. <laughs> that's the snap of colored <laughs> now i'm on thomas's team so he says this and i'm like thomas what the hell are you saying man <laughs> all right who's next <laughs> that's, that's, Lewis that's, and Taylor. taylor's face is incredible Taylor, Taylor looks like he smelled something bad. He's disgusted like, right now he smells a part and lewis lewis has, almost has like a, a look of like Delight of like, oh my God, it's all burning down. <laughs> oh my God, that was such a wonderful moment, man. That w- when are we doing another one of those? Soon. Yeah, man. How soon? <laughs> Next time you're in town. Oh, okay. there you go. Very good, good. Julie Delpy saying that yesterday, though, as a 54 year old white French American actress, like no matter what the context, the sound is just flawless. Like it's unbelievable. And Kieran Culkin then recreating. The visual of him uh, caught in the boardroom uh, during succession. Everybody knows they've used that sort of yeah. meme all the time of him just sort of sca- and literally recreating it, head in his hands. And I want to know, like, is he putting his head in his hands out of shame for her, or is he putting his head in his hands because he doesn't want to be associated no, no, no. with this clip no, on no, no, camera? No, no. It's a combo of both. Maybe? No, I, I think it's like, a, oh dear God, I'm seeing oh a headline God. now because she did apologize for these. Con- this, well, this was around, obviously, this was around Oscars time, and it was about the diversity. Yeah. Two-time Academy Award nominee had said it was better to be African American than a woman in Hollywood while discussing Roe... Oh, Roe... What? Roe versus Wade? What? No, Roe over all white nominations? Row. Row. Wow. That's like when... You're, Spelled you're, Roe, though. You're, yeah, you're reading from like a British website. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The Brits, oh, yeah, when okay. they want to say like a big hubbub, they go, they made a row about less. That's what's okay. Up, no, does she that. Not, not realize that there were black women? No, well, no, but it, it's not even that. It's 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 just dumb. Because her, I heard the longer cl- clip and she says like, because they can say things and no one like makes a big deal about it. I'm like, what? Oh, like the she, she was okay. like, I'm, sure. so, I'm very sorry for how I expressed myself. It was never meant to diminish the injustice done to African-American artists. So she kind of, you know, she walked it back. She backtracked. Well, yeah. She moonwalked. <laughs> she moonwalked. And it's so easy for them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, let me ask you guys a question about these s- streaming apps. Because not all streaming apps are created equally, right? And I'm talking about, like, Netflix, Hulu, Max, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, some of them, they're great. Like, it's not – first of all, this is my theory. The main thing that should come up should be things that the algorithm knows based on what you like. You you would probably like this. The next thing on the screen should be finish watching what you were watching. Right, yeah. I hate having to scroll 
to find the finish watching what I was watching. This is ridiculous. Or continue watching the series that you're right. watching. Those should be the second thing on the screen. Some of these apps get it right. We don't need to name names. Some of them don't. But the thing I hate the most is if you're going to be suggesting things to me, if you're going to hide me continuing watching what I was watching, at least suggest something I, I watch, man. How are you going to suggest something that has nothing to do with me? The whole point do of Do you this, even know me? Yeah, do you even know me? The whole, How do you feel about the top 10? Oh, this is the top 10. I like it. I like it because sometimes I don't know what I want to watch. I, I finished watching whatever it was I was watching. And I, like the suggestions aren't so great. I'm like, well, let me see what everybody else is watching. Just, do you believe the top ten? I was like, do you just believe about to that say. that's not just them corporately trying to like, get can the stuff I buy, they invested can, in? Can a movie buy its way to number one? Yeah, I feel like it's like buying yourself a Billboard hit. I would say I believe it because Seinfeld is always in the top ten, and they don't own that. They just have they just paid the rights for it. So Suits was in the top ten too. That they don't own that one either. Yeah, that, but that was Netflix. newly added. Yeah. So it's like, that's my question. The is, there's stuff that's yeah, newly but, added that nobody watches. Yeah, Right, but when they newly add something and they want it to rise, is I there would, a chance that they're putting that in there? I'm not saying necessarily that that is happening. I'm, I'm just asking questions. And, 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 and I would say that Netflix, when it comes to the algorithm suggesting, actually does a pretty good job. Yeah, they're good at it. They're good at it. But that top So is 10, HBO Max. The top 10. It's just Max. Max no. It's just Max. The top 10 it's a fine, I'm sorry. On, uh, on Netflix when it's Netflix produced shows with the red end on it, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I might, it might be some juice. That's I got to hear I'm other people talk about it. If another person told me mm -hmm. about it, then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm a little invested. But I feel like a lot of people fall for it because a lot of people will watch whatever's in the top 10 just blindly. I know because they watch terrible shows and they're like, this is bad. I'm like, why'd you watch yeah, it? Of course. Top 10. They have, they have Culkin in the bottom right of your screen right now. Yeah. His oh. reaction to Delpy. <laughs> Oh man, he's biting his fist. <laughs> Who is he closest to on the Tony show? Like, where would he have sat on the Tony show? Like, oh, Taylor next to for you? sure. It was almost like the Tony look. Like, no. he's concerned for his career the way Tony was. I'm DeVito. For sure. <laughs> You're always <laughs> DeVito. 